Okay, so in today's section 5.4, we're going to take a look at how to solve right triangles using some of these trigonometric ratios, the sine, cosine, and tangent. So in order to do that, we use these, and we need to remember that acronym SOHCAHTOA, where the sine is the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine is the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. Another couple things we need to remember when we're dealing with right triangles or triangles in general is the triangle sum theorem, which simply says that the interior angles of any triangle will always add or sum to 180 degrees. And then Pythagorean theorem, which we should certainly be familiar with, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the square of the two legs combined equals the square of the hypotenuse. And that finds us missing side lengths when we have the other two of any right triangle. So right now with the tools we have, we can solve for a right triangle if we have one side and one angle or two sides. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about how to solve uh, when we have different information. But right now we've got to have at least a side and an angle or two sides. So if we look at this first example where we have triangle ABC and we're going to solve for X and we're going to find the length of side C to A. So if I want to find the missing information here, I know that it's a right triangle by this angle notation. This is 42 degrees. So then this has to be its complement. So I know that these two would need to combine to make 90. So 90 take away 42. And this one would have to be 48 degrees. Now, in order to find the missing side length, because they gave me 42 degrees here, I'm going to consider this my reference angle. So I'm working from this angle. So then this is the opposite side. This would be the adjacent side to this angle. And this is the hypotenuse. So the side I'm looking for is the opposite side. And the side I have is the hypotenuse. So I go back to my ratio, SOHCAHTOA. And I'm dealing with an opposite and hypotenuse. And that looks like that's going to be the sine ratio. So the sine of 42 degrees is equal to the opposite side, that's my unknown in this case, over the hypotenuse, 6. And a little bit of rearranging here. So I multiply both sides by 6. We'll cancel there. And I've solved for x. So x is equal to 6 times the sine of 42 degrees. I'll bring up my calculator here. Now, right now I'm working with degrees, so I need to make sure my calculator is in that mode. And the default is radians, so I'm going to switch that over to degrees, just hit enter. That's under the mode key. Second quit, back to the home screen. I'm going to take 6 times the sine of 42. And there we have 4.0, or just approximately 4. And then I could also find the missing side length of B to C if I were asked to. And at this point, I could use Pythagorean theorem. I would prefer you continue to use your trig ratio since this is not an exact value. It's an approximation. And then we could just use the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse, which would be the cosine ratio. Let's take a look at another example. So in this case, the information is not labeled. So I have triangle ABC, sides ABC. Notice again, typically, you should remember this from your geometry. The angles are notated with the capital letters. And then the sides opposite the angle are the lowercase, same letter. Then I have angle theta and angle beta. So it tells me that theta is 51 degrees. So if this is 51, I know beta has to be the complement, so this one must be 39. And it tells me that side C is 34. So don't be confused again. This is a lowercase c, so they're referencing side c, not to be confused with angle c. And typically in trigonometry, they will use some sort of uh, Greek letter to designate the angle, in this case, theta and beta.
So this side length A to B is 34. So let's find the other missing sides. Since this is a the side they gave me, I'm going to use that as my reference angle again. So this is my reference. So with respect to this angle, this would be the opposite side. This would be the adjacent, the next two. And this would be the hypotenuse. And in order to find the missing side, I'm going to go ahead and start with the opposite side here. And from this angle, the opposite with respect to the side I'm given, the hypotenuse, that again is my sine ratio. So the sine of 51 degrees is equal to the opposite side. We'll just use variable A over the hypotenuse, which is 34. In order to solve this, I just multiply both sides by 34. And so 34 times the sine of 51 is equal to A. Again, we want to make sure the calculator is in degrees. And I know that from the last problem, I've already changed it. So I'll just type in 34 times the sine of 51. And it's approximately 26.4. Now to find the other side, which is the adjacent to this reference angle, adjacent and hypotenuse. And again, I'm going to use the hypotenuse even though I just found this opposite side because this is an approximation. This was a given value and was exact. So I'm going to use the adjacent and the hypotenuse. That is the cosine. So we'll set that up. So in this case, the cosine of 51 degrees is equal to the adjacent, that's my unknown, over the hypotenuse, which is 34. And to solve this one again, we just multiply both by 34. And so B is equal to 34 times the cosine of 51 degrees. And that's 21, we'll round that to 4. And there's my remaining two side lengths. And let's take a look at a couple more examples. Uh, story problems, little application problems. Oftentimes they're set up with some uh, slightly different vocabulary and they reference an angle of elevation and an angle of depression. You should have seen these in your geometry course and should be familiar with them, but an angle of elevation is just an angle that's formed between a horizontal line and the line of sight from an observer to something at a higher level, up, elevated. And an angle of depression is just the opposite from the horizontal and the line of sight in the observer to an object at a lower level. So they are looking down, depression. And we'll see what those look like here. First problem. We have the diagonal path through a rectangular park is 600 feet long. One side of the park is 350 feet long. How long is the other side? And what angle is formed by the diagonal and the 350 foot side of the park? So let's take a look at that setup. I find typically it's easiest when we have story problems to start with a picture. So I'll draw my rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and make the diagonal through here. And it tells me that the diagonal through the park is 600. So that's 600 feet. So this is a rectangle, so that makes this a right triangle. It tells me that one side of the park is 350. That's arbitrary, it doesn't really matter which one you make that. And how long is the other side? Well, that's simple enough. We'll call this one just X for the unknown. This would just be a Pythagorean theorem problem. So I could say A squared plus B squared, in this case X, equals C squared, the hypotenuse squared. So let's see, 350 squared, it's 122,500, and 600 squared is 360,000. We'll go ahead and subtract this from both sides. Sorry, missed that. 
And then we'll go ahead and square root both sides. And we get approximately 487.3 feet. So that's the length. That's a simple Pythagorean theorem problem. Now, we really haven't talked about this yet. In the next section, we'll go into this a little more. But if I want to know the angle, the angle formed between uh, this diagonal and the 350 side, that would be this piece right here. Call that theta. If I want to know what that angle is, I need to set up the relationship with this as my reference angle. So I have the adjacent. And again, I'm choosing to use this value because it is exact and was given. If I miscalculated this and because this is an estimate, I don't want to use this side. So I'm going to use the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And so adjacent and the hypotenuse, that's going to be the cosine ratio. So I know that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now, in order to solve for this, I ultimately have to undo the cosine of theta. And we do that by using the inverse. Again, this is something from geometry, should recall. And we will talk about this a little bit more in the next uh, lesson. But if I take the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta, these ultimately just cancel and leave me with theta. So I've solved for that angle. And then I'm going to pull up my calculator here. It's still in degrees. And I want the inverse, that second cosine. You see it right there in blue. 350 over 600. And it's approximately 54.3 degrees. So there's the angle as well as the missing side length. Let's take a look at another. In this case, a ladder, a 30 foot ladder is placed at a 75 degree angle with the floor. How far away from a wall should we place the ladder? Well, let's take a look. So that's setting up a triangle. So this is going to be my 30 foot ladder. This is going to be my wall. And this is going to be the floor. This is the ladder. You can make your pictures more detailed if it helps you. This is a 30 foot, 75 degrees here, because that's the angle between the ladder and the floor. So we want to know how far away from the wall. So I'm looking for this. So as long as I build my triangle correctly, given the information, this is the reference. And that's going to be what dictates the ratios I use. So from this reference angle, I have the hypotenuse and I have the adjacent. Well, adjacent hypotenuse is the cosine ratio. Okay, so we go ahead and set this up. So the cosine of 75 degrees is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I just multiply both sides by 30 and x equals 30 times the cosine of 75. So I'll bring up my calculator. 30 times the cosine, 75 degrees. Approximately 7 point, uh, we'll run at 7.8. So really what we found is that a 30 foot ladder needs to be about 7.8 feet away from the wall in order to create that 75 degree angle. Let's look at one with the angle of elevation. Again, the scenario here, the angle of elevation from a point on the street. So here's my street to the top of a building. So I've got some building here. It's not a very good looking building, but it doesn't need to be. And the angle created here is 53 degrees. If the point where the angle is measured is 10 feet away from the building, so then this is only 10 feet, use a different color, 10 feet. 
how high is the building. So I want to find its height. I want to find, we'll call that X. So if you need to clean that up a little bit or you don't like to draw those, no problem. Just make a nice triangle. This is 53 degrees. This is what I'm looking for. And this is 10 feet. And from what I'm looking at here, I've drawn my building uh, severely higher than it is going to be. We'll take a look. So again, this is my reference angle. I'm looking at the opposite and the adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, that's going to be the tangent ratio. Sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite and adjacent, so tangent. So the tangent of 53 degrees is equal to the opposite side, my unknown, over the adjacent. Again, multiply both sides by 10, and x is equal to 10 times the tangent of 53 degrees. And we have 13.3. Another little story problem here. In this case, we have the top of a lighthouse at a height of 100 feet above sea level. So I've got this, probably a cliff here, and then a lighthouse. It's broadcasting out light. And this is, that didn't look very good. This is 100 feet. And from this, the angle of depression, this is where it sometimes gets a little trickier. Uh, I always think about the angle of depression, again, from the horizontal. So let me switch over here and we'll dash this. So from the top here, the horizontal. So the angle of depression is aiming downwards. And the angle of depression to a sailboat. So we're coming down this way towards a sailboat. So we've got a little boat. And that angle is 55 degrees. So again, the angle of depression is from the horizontal downwards to the line of sight. So notice that right now, depending upon how I build my triangle, this may or may not be within the triangle. So if I come across the bottom, and I typically think of them like this, and this whole thing here is the 100, this 55 degrees is not actually in this triangle. So I'm really looking for its complement. So if this is 55, the angle inside here is 35 because this forms a right angle between the vertical and the horizontal here. Otherwise, what you would do and what a lot of people do is they flip it and they build the vertical right here and then use that 55. Doesn't matter, all it's doing is flipping the ratio. So either way, you'll work out with the correct answer, but what you wanna make sure to do is if you build it like I do here, that you are using the complement within the triangle. And we are looking for the distance from the top of the lighthouse to the boat. So that is this side here. In this case, that would be the hypotenuse. And then this would be the adjacent. So adjacent hypotenuse is cosine. So the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So notice now my unknown quantity ends up in the denominator. So I multiply both sides by x in order to remove it from the denominator. And that gets me x times the cosine of 35 equals 100. Now in order to solve for x, I have to divide by the cosine of 35 degrees. So x equals 100 over the cosine of 35 degrees. So the cosine, let's see. And if I want to, I can put that in here, alpha y equals, I can build it as a stacked fraction. And I get approximately 122.1. And this was in feet.
and last one. Okay, in this situation, we have a person on a nature walk and the person spots a small oak tree, the angle of elevation of 25 degrees to the top of the tree from her eye level. So we're gonna start out by drawing a picture. So I got a little person here. And from their eye level, they spot a tree. And from their eye level to the top of the tree, that is 25 degrees. Actually, let me make that solid. So from here to the top of the tree, 25 degrees. That's 25 degrees from the horizontal. And an angle of depression of 15 degrees to the bottom of the tree. So we also have Fifteen degrees. Her eye level is about 165 centimeters from the ground. So this is going to be about 165. So we've got a few different triangles going on here. What we're asked to find, how tall is the tree? So ultimately what I need to find is this piece and this piece. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and form this triangle because this piece here is actually the same as this piece here. Uh, again, apologize, my drawing, this tree should go down to the same plane as the person. So this is the same as their height. So I've got this triangle. So the height of the person's 165. So from their eye level down to the base, that would be 165. And then this was 15 degrees. And so I can find my missing side here using the ratio from this angle. This would be the opposite and the adjacent. So that's tangent. So that is the tangent of 15 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So x equals 165 over tangent of 15. And we'll go ahead and calculate that. So that's approximately 615.8. Whoops. This is all in centimeters. So what we've just found is basically the distance from her to the tree. And now I can build this triangle up above here. So we're looking for this height. And now I know that this is 615.8 here, and this angle is 25 degrees. So from this angle, I'm looking for the opposite and adjacent again. So this is also the tangent. So in this case, the tangent of 25 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. Multiply both sides by 615.8. So I have 615.8 times the tangent of 25. And I get 287 point, we'll round that to two. So that's the height from her eye level to the top of the tree. So we combine that 287.2 with the 165 and we get 252.2, excuse me, 452.2. And this again, centimeters. Okay, so if you have any questions, bring them to class tomorrow and we'll get a little more practice.